Sometimes it's hard to know where to start when you're building a home lab. It can be overwhelming with all the choices and number of services that you think you need to run just to keep things running smoothly. Well, over the years, I've learned that before you go too far down the rabbit hole of self-hosting, there are a few core services that should always come up first. These are the foundation for the rest of your lab. So today, what we're going to do is I want to take you through the handful of services that I always spin up first and why each of them is important and matters. So stick around and let's dive in. Before we dive in, let me quickly explain what I mean by a service. Now, I'm not saying at one specific layer of the OSI model or technically a service in the terms of an application. I'm using this loosely as a specific thing that you can stand up in your home lab to make everything else work. Now, keep that in mind as we go through what we're going to discuss today. The very first core service is layer two switching and layer three routing. This is absolutely the foundation of your lab. If you go buy a prosumer router at your local retail store, you're basically getting a router and switch in one small box. It'll switch between your devices and it will route traffic from your LAN out to the internet. Simple as that. That setup works fine for beginners and even very small home labs, as well as just a basic home network. But as you grow your lab, you're going to want more control. Now, most people will eventually have at least one managed switch and then a router slash firewall that they want to self-host, something like PFSense or OpenSense. I use VLANs to isolate traffic between Docker, Proxmox, and other services in my environment. And that's where proper switching and routing really start to shine. You'll be able to segment your network into those logical segments where you want to host your services. And you can separate those by the role of that app or that service or that device. Now, this is just basic network security. Proper segmentation lays the groundwork for proper security in any networked environment. So do get that switching and routing those services hammered out first. Now, if it's just VLAN 1, make sure that you have those devices properly secured and think about routing. Think about how you're going to secure your traffic, both ingress as well as egress connectivity from your home lab network. Next up, and honestly, we could spend several videos worth of time talking about this service. This is the very first service outside of routing and switching that I spin up in my lab and think about, and that is DNS. Could you run a home lab without DNS? Sure, but it would be painful to say it lightly. DNS is like a phone book for your lab and for the internet in general. It lets you map those friendly names to IP addresses. So instead of having to remember something like 192.168.1.100, you can simply remember server1.mylab.home. And when you have only two or three machines, typing IP addresses may not seem so bad, but as soon as you start spinning up those multiple services, multiple subnets, DNS becomes absolutely essential. And it also helps when you want to automate things like SSL certificates with Let's Encrypt because working DNS is required for part of that workflow for DNS validation. So what are your options? Well, you could just use the DNS resolver that's built into your router or your firewall. Many do it, and it works fine for the most part. OpenSense, PFSense, they include things like Unbound DNS. Uh, Unify gateways have DNS built in them too. And if you want to have more control, you can always spin up something like PyHole or AdGuard Home. They don't just resolve DNS, but they also do things like block advertisements, malware, telemetry data, and other junk network traffic that is just found from devices. Technidium is another solid choice if you want granular control. If you've never heard of that one, great DNS server. And then also Windows Server DNS. Uh, I know we knock Windows a lot, but Windows Server DNS is actually pretty awesome, especially if you're working in an Active Directory environment. Uh, Active Directory integrated DNS provides a really slick way to replicate your DNS zones to multiple servers so that if one goes down, you still got all of those records and you can set those up in such a way that for high availability and fault tolerance. So 
Uh, really great configurations you can do with Windows. So definitely check out Windows Server, especially it's a great way to learn more about Windows Server, Windows Server Active Directory, DNS, all of those things are core services in a Windows network. And that'll really help you uh, in an enterprise environment, especially for on-premises services, because most are still using Microsoft Windows Active Directory. Now let's talk about another critical service, and that is DHCP. And I think this deserves attention on the first services that you spin up in your lab. Sure, just like DNS, you could manually configure IP addresses for everything in your lab, but let's face it, that's going to get tedious, error prone, and very hard to keep track of. So DHCP or Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol is designed to take that pain away. Uh, with a DHCP server, every client that connects to your network can automatically get an IP address. And what's more, the DHCP server keeps track of what's used and what's available. Available. Now that's important because that means you don't have to keep track of it. And if you want certain servers to always have the same IP address, you can create what's called reservations that tie a specific IP address to a specific MAC address. That way the same machine always gets the same address and nothing else takes it. And that's really a great way to do things, especially in enterprise environments. Uh, reservations play a large role there. In more enterprise setups as well, Windows Server DHCP can even integrate with Active Directory DNS so that new devices automatically update their DNS records when they get an IP address. So we've got a lot of good integration there in the Microsoft ecosystem. Now the good news is almost everything can provide DHCP today, even consumer routers, ISP provided modems, but also open source uh, firewalls such as PFSense, OpenSense, and Unify Gateways as a commercial product. Pretty much all of them even a nice switch can actually have DHCP turned on. So this foundation for IP addressing in your lab and building on top of that foundation of DNS is a core critical part. Because if you get the name resolution or IP addressing wrong, then nothing works. Definitely give attention to DHCP as well for one of your core critical services. Now let's move into reverse proxies. Once I have those core critical services of DNS and DHCP running, and I want to start spinning up my containers, the next service that I always stand up is a reverse proxy. Now these usually run as containers themselves. That means I'll have my Docker host online at this point. A reverse proxy then gives you a single entry point for all of your other services. So for example, instead of having to remember different ports on the same IP address of your Docker container host and remember in your mind, okay, this port goes to this particular application or service, that reverse proxy will allow you to route that traffic. And when I say route, I'm talking about at an application level, it will allow you to route that traffic to the correct container that is running on your Docker container host. And that means that all you have to remember is that friendly name. Your reverse proxy then takes that ingress connection and it says, okay, I know which container is configured for that particular set of traffic as well as that host name, and it will correctly route it to that container in the back end. Now some good options are Nginx Proxy Manager. I think that one is extremely beginner friendly. It has a clean web UI. It's got Let's Encrypt support built in. However, my favorite is Traffic. It's uh, especially a powerful solution if we're running uh, Docker, Docker Swarm, as well as Kubernetes. And it's one that I personally really like right now. Uh, it can auto detect containers and configure routing on the fly. And then one that's kind of a middle ground between those two is Caddy. And it's a modern, simple to configure reverse proxy and it automatically issues certificates as well. So uh, that's one to check out. By getting this reverse proxy set up, you're going to really mitigate having to remember this forwarding nightmare of trying to remember Docker containers and specific ports and all of those things, as well as SSL termination. It's gonna allow you to correctly handle and easily handle those SSL certificates. Now, after all of those core services are set up, routing, switching, DNS, DHS, 
HTTP reverse proxy, I also like to get monitoring going early. Now, monitoring gives you visibility in what's happening so that you'll know when something stops working. And if you saw my last video about my 10 most embarrassing mistakes in the home lab actually taking down the wrong server, if I would have had monitoring in place, I would have known that. So you'll know immediately when something stops working. So don't forget monitoring. And also don't forget security. So once you're formulating your framework of home lab services, then you start layering in things for security. This usually goes hand in hand with your router, firewall setup, segmenting traffic. It once again with VLANs is an, is an important step to keep different services isolated from each one. And then also thinking about your firewall rules. What different VLANs should be able to talk to what other VLANs. So those are basic security uh, things that you can put into place. Now, why do I prioritize these services first? Well, we've talked a bit about this, but without DNS, you're stuck hyping IP addresses. Without DHCP, you're manually tracking all the IP addressing in your home lab environment manually with manual effort across all VLANs. Without a reverse proxy, you're going to end up with a mess of port forwards and inconsistent access. So with all of these things in place, your lab is going to work and work well. Everything else like containers, virtual machines, Kubernetes, uh, all of those things become so much easier to deploy and actually expect to have consistent behavior out of when you have those foundational services. Now, here's my personal workflow when I bring up a new node. First, I point it at my DNS and DHCP services so it fits neatly into the system, acquires everything it needs. Then I set up a reservation or DNS entry if that wasn't done automatically. So I've got a predictable IP address, a friendly host name. After that, I get it published through a reverse proxy so that I can hit it with an HTTPS URL if it's hosting an application. Now this workflow keeps my environment well organized even when I'm just spinning up the very first virtual machine or container on a new machine. So if you're building or rebuilding a home lab, start with the basics, routing and switching, DNS, DHCP, and a reverse proxy if you're getting into containerized applications. All of these services may not be flashy, they may not be the next new thing, but I can guarantee you they are the foundation that makes everything else work. And if they aren't working right, you're not gonna care about anything else flashy because it's not gonna work. All right, that's it for this one. I wanna hear what services you spin up when you're building out your home lab. Please do drop a comment and let's talk about it. I'd love to hear your ideas and services that you find especially helpful. Speaking of helpful, if you found this video helpful, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit that notification bell to stay tuned for more deep dives into virtualization, Proxmox, Docker, and just all things home lab and geek stuff. Thanks for watching. Do stay safe out there. Keep on home labbing, and I will see you in the next video.